Hi there, this is Magnetism Lesson 4. I'm going to do Faraday and Lenz's Law. So the start of a recap question from previous lessons on magnetism. If you want to pause and have a go. So protons of mass M and charge E experience a force at a right angle to its motion once it enters a magnetic field of flux density B. Do we have an equation for the cyclotron frequency? So we know that when a charged particle enters a magnetic field, it experiences a force at a right angle to its motion, which will make it exhibit circular motion. So the force that's acting is the magnetic force, so that would be BQV. We're going to make that equal to the centripetal force, mv squared over r. Cancel this v. Rearrange just to find v, so v is equal to BQR over m, so BQR over m. And then we're going to substitute an equation from circular motion, the v equals, the one that you've probably remembered is 2 pi r over t. But we're going to use v equals 2 pi r f, because obviously 1 over t is equal to f. So 2 pi r f equals bqr over m. As you can see, the r's cancel, and we need to rearrange to find f to get the cyclotron frequency. So frequency is equal to bq divided by 2 pi m. Hopefully that one went okay. Let's move on. So Faraday's law. Faraday's law states that the magnitude of the induced EMF in a circuit is proportional to the rate of change of magnetic flux linkage in the conductor. So the rate at which the magnetic flux is cut. An example might be moving, moving a magnet inside a, a coil of wire from GCC, it would induce a current. The more flux that we cut in a certain amount of time, the bigger the EMF. In Faraday's law, EMF is equal to N, d thi by dt, N being the number of turns on the coil, d thi being the change in flux, divided by dt, change in time. Want to make some notes on that. Lenz's law. So Lenz's law states that the direction of the induced EMF is such as to cause effects to oppose the change producing it. And as you can see, Lenz's law is basically the same as Faraday's law. There's only one difference. And the difference is the negative sign. This actually got Lenz a Nobel Prize. And you might think that's a bit, a bit shady. You know, all Lenz did was take Faraday's law and put a minus in front, get a Nobel Prize. However, the, the negative sign indicates that the current opposes the change making it. And when I do, we're going to go for an example of a magnet falling through a, a, copper, con, a copper conductor, through a tube, which you may have seen before. And Lenz actually explained what was happening for this phenomena to occur, which coincidentally got him the Nobel Prize. But... In terms of equations, yeah, just a negative sign in front of Lenz's law, so if in front of Faraday's law. So if you want to pause and uh, make some notes, feel free. Let's move on. So as you can see on this GIF on the right hand side, if you put a magnet through a copper coil, it will slow down. And what we're going to do is explain how it would slow down or why it would slow down. Uh, and this is what Lenz did. So I'm just going to do a like a tick list kind of thing, step by step. Remember to pause if you want to make any notes. So a magnet is dropped into a copper pipe, which is a conductor. The falling magnet has its own magnetic field, obviously, and it induces a voltage slash current, or therefore a current, in the copper pipe itself. So the current flow in the copper pipe induces a second magnetic field, its own magnetic field. And the second magnetic field, coincidentally, opposes the original magnetic field that created it. Therefore, the magnet's descent will slow. And as the magnet slows down, the amount of current produced will, will also diminish. And this will reduce the strength of the second magnetic field, and the magnet will fall at a steady rate once an equilibrium has been set. 
So this is what Lens described. So Lens did this. And the second magnetic field that will be produced in this situation opposes the original magnetic field that created it in the first place. Hence, the equation. EMF is equal to minus N change in flux over change in time. It's the idea of the opposing uh, magnetic field that produces this negative sign. Okay, let's move on. See this question then. You can just pause and have a go. And then I'll take you through the answer. A flat circular coil of 600 turns and with a mean radius of 1.5 centimetres is connected between the terminals of an ammeter. The total resistance of the coil on the ammeter is 0 0.5 ohms. The plane of the coil is placed at right angles to a uniform magnetic field of magnetic flux density 0 0.34 tesla. The coil is removed from the magnetic field in a time of 60 milliseconds. So we're going to calculate the magnitude of the average induced EMF across the ends of the coil. So let's do that first. So to do that, EMF is equal to N, change in flux over change in time. So what we can do is write, instead of flux, thigh, we can write BA. So it's going to be NBA, quite an easy one to remember if you like basketball, NBA over the change in time. So let's put some numbers in. So N, the number of turns, is 600. Multiplied by uh, magnetic flux density, 0 0.34 tesla. Multiplied by the area. Now the area is, obviously it's a circle, so it's pi r squared, so pi times the radius, 0 0.015 squared. And then divide by the time of 60 milliseconds. So 60 times 10 to the minus three. And if you calculate that, that gives a EMF of 2.4 volts. Hopefully that one went okay. So I'm gonna clear this and then do part B, which is very straightforward now. So average induced current, current is voltage over resistance. So voltage is the 2.4 divided by a half. So that just doubled the 2.4 to give us a current of 4.8 amps. Hopefully that question went okay. Let's move on. So if I just pause and have a go at this one, then I'll take you through the answer. A flat coil of 680 turns and mean cross-sectional area, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4 square meters, is placed in a region of uniform magnetic uh, of a uniform magnetic field of flux density 580 microtesla. Initially, the plane of the coil is at right angles to the magnetic field. So calculate the mean induced EMF across the ends of the coil when A, the coil is withdrawn from the region of field in a time of 60 milliseconds. And part B, the coil is rotated through 90 degrees in a time of 60 milliseconds. And part C, the direction of the field is reversed in a time of 30 milliseconds. Apologies for not having them on straight away, I should have done. So first of all, so part A, if we are, so the equation is the rate of change of flux. So EMF is equal to N, change in flux over change in time. So if the plane of the coil is at a right angle to the magnetic field direction, then the initial flux will be a maximum. So that would just be NBA over time. But this is it's the change in flux. So this would be change. But if we remove it or we draw it from the from the region of field, then that means that it's out of the magnetic field. So the flux outside of the magnetic field will be zero. So it will be NBA minus zero. Therefore just NBA over the change in time. So let's calculate this. So the number of coils is 680 multiplied by the magnetic flux density, 580 microtesla, so times 10 to the minus 6, multiplied by the cross-sectional area, 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4, and then that will be minus 0 because it's the change in flux. Flux outside of the field would obviously be 0, divided by the change in time, 
for this to occur, which is 60 milliseconds, so 60 times 10 to the minus 3. And that will give an EMF that is equal to 2.96 times 10 to the minus 3, so 2.96 millivolts, which we can round to 3 millivolts. If you've got 2.96, that's fine. Part B then. The coil is rotated through 90 degrees. So this is the exact same answer. So the EMF is 3 millivolts. And the reason why is because initially the coil, the plane of the coil, is at a right angle or perpendicular to the magnetic field. So it will be a maximum flux. And if it rotates through 90 degrees, after a 90 degree turn, the plane of the coil would be parallel to the magnetic field. So again, we've got the exact same scenario as withdrawing from the field. It would be the NBA minus the flux at, after a 90 degree turn, which would be zero, divided by the change of time, which would give us the exact same answer as the first question. Hopefully that went okay. Last one, a couple of ways of doing this. So it says that the direction of the field is reversed. Now, if you've remembered that the magnetic field strength is a vector, then you should have caught with this one okay. So essentially, if we did MBA, so I'll just do this, so that'd be 680 times the magnetic flux density of 580. I keep doing that, I'm not sure why. 580, I'll just put microtesla this time just to save room. Multiplied by the area, the 4.5 times 10 to the minus 4. That gives us a value, so the maximum flux, of 1.7748 times 10 to the minus 4 Weber terms. Now, if we are reversing the direction of the field, that means we're going from that at a positive value. So initially, and if we reverse the direction, we're going to get the exact same value, but in the opposite direction. And EMF is obviously given by the rate of change of flux. So it's the flux, well, the flux linkage divided by time. So we're going to have to do plus 1.7748 times 10 to the minus 4, minus minus 1.7748 times 10 to the minus 4. So it's just double the original maximum flux. So if we do that, so let's basically add them together and then divide by the time because the EMF is changing flux linkage divided by changing time. So we're going to divide by 30 times 10 to the minus 3 seconds. That will give you an EMF of 12 millivolts. You could do that just by looking at the equation. So the EMF is the ch uh, rate of change of flux. So EMF is N, NBA over T. And the rate of change of flux was double what it was beforehand, and the time was halved compared to part B. So how many halves going to two is four, so you get four times the EMF. So the answer to B was three millivolts, times four gives us the 12 millivolts. So you could do it that way, or you can do it with the numbers, it's completely up to you. But hopefully that went okay. So in the, in the next lesson, lesson five, I'm just going to do like three or four exam Start questions on flux and flux linkage and the the Faraday and Lenz's law. So I hope that helps and I'll see you at the next one. Thank you.